You've been walking around feeling a little frustrated over the last couple of weeks. being like, seriously, this isn't going to work? Oh, this is broken too. Oh, it's not like I need to get into this computer in a timely manner to go on the radio or accomplish whatever other work task I've got. No, no, I'll just sit here looking at a spinning wheel as I attempt to log on for the 15th time. Have you had a week or two like that where just nothing works, nothing falls into place, whether it be mechanical things or computer-related things or just like you seem, you seem like you feel out of sync with absolutely everything that's been going on and it just nothing clicks nothing works nothing comes together and it's been infuriating have you had a week or two like that so maybe we'll talk to him about this a little later on in the show but when i brought up the fact that i was going to stab someone because something didn't work properly and uh, i'd figured out who to blame for it Funkhauser was like ah don't worry don't worry, everything will be fine once Mercury gets out of retrograde. I was like, that's very interesting. You place stock in astrological stuff. If you'd said Mercury's in retrograde right around the beginning of the time that we started hanging out together, I would have gone like, I can't be friends with this person. But I actually place a certain amount of stock in it now that Funkhauser said it because, well, <clears throat> absolutely everybody I know has had similar complaints to me over the last couple of weeks. And... A lot of people have been talking about Mercury being in retrograde. It's weird. I don't understand it. I don't really under know. I, I don't get what it means or, or what it stands for. But uh, apparently, that whole thing of nothing clicking, nothing working, nothing falling into a place can be blamed on something astrological. And a lot of people have chosen to do that. And while it's tempting for me to go, eh, Mercury's in retrograde, the thing that does is it removes the force of your will from the equation. And if you're going through it now, for whatever reason, maybe Mercury is in retrograde. But if you are going through it, if you are going through whatever little form of hell you've got going on in your life or work, or maybe some large form of hell, maybe things are truly, truly awful and terrible. And maybe it is because Mercury's been in retrograde. I don't know. But no matter what it is you're going through now, rather than Rather than going, well, as soon as the uh, moon comes up tonight, everything's going to be fine. I hope. I keep my fingers crossed. <clears throat> Embrace it. Embrace that pain. Embrace that suffering. <clears throat> it's making you a bigger, better, more capable, more experienced person. It's forging your personal steel in the fire of difficulty, of failure, of whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and it can only add to who you are. It's a good thing. Pain when you're going through it, pain when you are going through it, will lead to greater things. And we talk about this all the time. If you're going into battle, if you're uh, the military version of a rookie, if you're off on your first tour of some hostile country, who do you want watching your ass? Do you want someone that's never done this before? Or someone who's got the scars and battle wounds and... has been knocked down a million times in a million different conflicts. You want that person watching your ass. You want someone whose success is that they were forged in the fires of failure. Muhammad Ali said, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion.
but definitely much less gangster. With a star like this on a day like this, it's good to be this white boy prankster. I don't push your bands, love my BWU. Drive an old drop top, it's what I love to do. And it gets me to work on time to say hello to you. On your radio, mad money, no, but I love what I do. On the radio, hear me yo the whole night through. I'm feeling so lucky that I can be the voice that you hear in this great big city. I rock on your radio, then head home. So excited for a moonlight walk You think they've never done this before And it's all good Sunshine, come my way Nothing's gonna change how I feel today Things gonna get in the way Of my perfect day, perfect day Sunshine, come my way Nothing's gonna change how I feel today Things gonna get in the way Of my perfect day, perfect day It's all what you make of it Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Do we have a... Uh... There we go. Hi, mm. caramba. Uh, here we are, 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo. Do you know what we're celebrating, Cinco de Mayo? Most Americans wrongly suspect that it is Mexican Independence Day. No. Nope. Cinco de Mayo is, of course, Spanish for the 5th of May. Celebrated, <laughs> it's celebrated in the United States and Mexico. It's one of those things we've reappropriated. It's not quite as tenuous a link to getting liquored up in the street as St. Patrick's Day is. <laughs> uh, but the uh, <laughs> the general meaning of Cinco de Mayo is, is kind of sort of lost. And when uh, when you dig into it, a lot of people consider it to be sort of a very significant day in American history. Basically, it's uh, <laughs> she's got some pipes on her. Oh gosh! In Mexico, the holiday is called El Dia de la Batalla de Puebla, which means the Battle of the Puebla. It's basically observed to commemorate the Mexi- Mexican army's victory which is a little unlikely, over the French at the Battle of Puebla, May 5th, 1862. Under the leadership of General Ignacio Zaragoza Seguin, in the United States, Cinco de Mayo, uh, like I said, a lot of time is uh, mistaken for Mexican Independence Day. Which is, uh, just so we're clear on this, September 16th, the day where we in America do nothing. Now, why do we in America celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Mistakenly assuming that it's Mexican Independence Day when it's not. Well, let's uh, let's talk about why why we uh, why we celebrated it all. Now, what was going on? 1862, May 5th in America. Well, that that would have been the uh, Civil War. Mm hmm. Yep. So how does that affect us? America might not be America. If it wasn't for the Mexican victory on Cinco de Mayo. 
See, basically what was happening was Napoleon III, he, uh, he was a conquering type of individual, and he wanted to, uh, well, he wanted to go after America. He didn't want America to be a united nation. He wanted it, you know, uh, something that was broken up so he could break up more of it and take more of it for himself. So Napoleon III was kind of a thorn in the side of Abraham Lincoln. Only because he was essentially, he was, Abraham Lincoln wanted to unite America. Napoleon III, not so much. So he was more on the side of the Confederacy. And what happens if Napoleon III establishes some sort of dominance in Mexico? Well, in that case, the, uh, uh, the things, the, uh, the events of the Civil War start to look entirely more bleak. If Napoleon III rolls through, establishes some kind of dominance in Mexico, and then sides with the Confederacy, then uh, that's an awful lot more of the South take for, uh, uh, for Abraham Lincoln. And improbably enough, improbably enough, Napoleon III's forces were beaten on Cinco de Mayo at the Battle of the Puebla. And all of a sudden, we don't have this enormous united force of the Confederacy and the French to deal with. A bunch of dirty Cajuns wanted to break up America so Napoleon could take chunks of it for himself. And uh, because of that, we are the America that we are today. Things might have gone very differently if the Mexicans had lost to the French. 5th of May, 1862. So for that, we say thank you. Or, I don't know, if you're one of those South will rise again, take my Confederate money. Uh, I'll uh, <laughs> take my Confederate money. I'm too busy trying to grow opposable thumbs to change that for the real stuff. If you're one of those types, you might be resentful of the fact that the Mexicans won Cinco de Mayo. But ironically, I think it's most of the uh, <laughs> most of the Confederacy, Confederate money types, the South will rise again types, who uh, celebrate Cinco de Mayo the most vociferously. But again, let's, uh, let's be real here. That's because it involves getting liquored up in the street as opposed to any historical significance to them. So for that reason... We celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Well, that, that's not the reason we celebrate Cinco de Mayo, but that's why it's a thing here in this country and why we pay absolutely no mind whatsoever to Mexican Independence Day in September because it didn't affect us. All righty then, Funkhauser. <laughs> let's, uh, let's discuss what's going on in the world today in our segment, My Witness News, in no way, shape, or form fair, certainly not balanced. How are you? Yes. And good. What is going on in the world? Uh, what is uh, what's the AD on the radio news time? <laughs> I was going to start with that AD on the radio news time. Ten twenty Mountain. 